go live now to Ukraine, to Lviv. That's where CTV's Omar Sachedina is standing by. Omar, Russia ramping up its attacks on key cities. As the world is watching that convoy creep closer to Kiev, what's the latest? Very ominous, and that's that's uh, a very appropriate word to use. And even here in Lviv, where I am, Marcia, um, on the western side of the country, uh, even though it has been relatively calm so far, there's certainly a sense of uh, you know people and their anxiety levels increasing. I'm standing, in fact, uh, outside of a factory right now. Now, in normal times, this facility produces materials for buildings, but uh, the excess steel that is at this facility is now being used to uh, make tools, basically, that will is being used in, in the war effort. I'm, I'm holding on to one of these things right now. This is made from steel. And basically what they do is they take giant sheets of steel and they and they cut um, pieces. They weld it together. And this, for example, would be used to puncture a tire. So uh, it would be placed on, on the road, on the street, and uh, anybody driving over uh, this 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 tool essentially uh, would have their tires flattened. There are also other devices that are um, far bigger than this. You can see, actually, in fact. Um, one that's being transported inside. It's basically a kind of uh, cross that's made with uh, two beams. They're cutting huge beams. They're, they're splicing them, essentially, and then um, putting them together. These are Czech hedgehogs. They're anti-tank obstacles that are from uh, the, uh, the Second World War era. So, you know, the, the men inside uh, between the ages of 18 and 60 who have to stay behind, who are working, and they're saying they have to, to work uh, because it, it is existential. I mean, this is uh, a, a war effort that is really uh, ramping up and that they have to do for the survival of their, their country, their people, and to defend their freedom. So there is an incredible amount of, of passion, of fervor, and uh, people working as hard as they can to, to fight for, for what they believe is, is really an existential cause. And tell us more about the people that you, the men that you are speaking with there and why it is so important for them to, to be there and to do something to protect their country. Well, you know, one of the things that has struck me from, from spending some time inside there, and we just spent about a, a couple of hours inside, is that Marcia, in many cases, these men don't even know each other, you know? And, and there, are, there are men, not only young men, there, there are elderly uh, men as well. And there was one man, in fact, who's inside and he's, he's got a cane with him. And he's also welding. And he's not, he's not alone. And, and these are people who are saying, look, you know, this is, this is our country. We've got this, this outside threat, this attack on our people. And we're not just going to sit idly by while this all happens. You know, if you compare the size of Russia's military compared to Ukraine's military, it's no match. I mean, Russia's, Russia's military is massive. But the fact that the Ukrainians have been able to put as much of a fight as they have is, is significant and perhaps a massive miscalculation on the part of Vladimir Putin, I, who, who probably in all likelihood thought that he could capture the crown jewel of Kiev by now. Uh, but he hasn't been able to do that. And so the resistance that you're seeing is, is significant. It is really, in some ways, quite incredible. And we were at um, a camp. We were, our last trip to Ukraine was about three weeks ago. And we were at uh, a camp where civilians were being trained. And Marcia, one of the things that still stands out for me is that they were, they were being trained using wood cutouts of guns. And they were being told, told what to do. Now, at that point, they were saying that we hope it, it doesn't get to anything bad, but we are preparing for the worst. And three weeks later, the world has shifted significantly, shifted massively. And so all of their preparations and their work from, from that time are certainly being used right now. Omar Sachedina in Lviv uh, for us this morning. Thank you so much.